Let's see. Ah, uh, we're there. Okay, we're live. All right. We'll start, we'll start from the beginning. Sorry, guys. I'm not sure what happened then. Um, just reset everything and it decided to work. So, uh, welcome. I'm Flynn. Uh, this is my job. Uh, and I'm here with Bill Hope. How are you doing, Bill? Still well? Very, very well. <laughs> I'm still still feeling well. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey to everybody in chat. Uh, lovely to see you. Um, glad you can hear us now. Everything's okay. Phew. Um, we're going to get started in just a moment here with the phenomenal Bill. If you've seen, if you, you, you may have seen this before, basically what we'll be doing um, is taking your suggestions. So um, if you're over on YouTube or anywhere else, um, jump over to behance.net slash live. And that's the chat we're going to be using today. Um, and we'll be taking your suggestions, but I'll let Bill explain uh, the theme. Sure. So basically what we're doing today is the theme is uh, build a zoo. So uh, basically we're going to be drawing as many animals as we can to fill out the scene that we've started working on. So um, I'm keen to hear uh, any animal or zoo themed suggestions that you might have for me to include in this picture. Um, and Flynn had the wonderful suggestion earlier of uh, if you're tuning in from a country other than Australia, um, we'd love to hear your national animal or, or, or yeah. an animal from your part of the world. It might be fun to make a sort of slightly more international bunch here. So um, yeah, keen to get started. Awesome, awesome. And I just want to just just before we jump over and uh, take your suggestions, um, please stick around today as well. Uh, about half an hour after our stream, we're going to be going live with the amazing Sophie Eleanor. Um, we'll be talking type lettering. Um, she's amazing. We're going to be doing a two part series in that. So one this week and one next week. Uh, we'll be kind of focusing on lettering and typography today. Uh, and then tomorrow she's going to be showing us how she animates a lot of her, her stuff as well. Uh, really incredible. So please do stick around. We've got lots of fun stuff today. Um, should we jump over, get started? Sure, let's go. All right. And you've already, you've already been <laughs> got started there. Yeah, I was just saying before, um, uh, I watched uh, the original um, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang the other day with my partner. So I've drawn in the car here Amazing. and we've got a happy crocodile at the wheel um, driving away. And I just thought I'd start on my second animal to go in this picture, which is going to be a little quokka. Um, I've been drawing quite a lot of, I've had a reason to, to draw a number of quokkas recently and they're very cute little guys. So I thought I would <laughs> sort of uh, stick one of these guys. If, if, um, if uh, people from outside Australia don't, don't know, a quokka is a sort of small, um, is it a, it's not a marsupial, is it? It's kind of like a tiny kangaroo. I, but I think it's actually, it looks kind of like a tiny kangaroo, but I think it's actually a, a rodent. It's more from like the, the, the rat family. But oh, really? Um, I think so. Yeah. 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 It's some sort of weird hybrid. But they're, they're known for taking extremely good selfies. They're sort of always have this goofy kind of smile on their faces. <laughs> Um, and they, they live in this one place called Rotnest Island, which apparently is Dutch for Ratnest Island, but it's, it's very pretty. It doesn't look like what you would imagine Ratnest Island looks like. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Dropping the facts um, <laughs> like straight away. I love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. I've spent a lot of time in, in uh, Quokka, Quokka World recently. <laughs> um, I just saw Deep Lynn was uh, mentioning in the chat that uh, the, um, the unicorn was the national animal of... Uh, um, of uh, Scotland, right. which I'm sure is another true fact coming out from coming out in the stream. So I think I'll I'll I'll, I'll start working in a uh, a Scottish unicorn. Amazing. I um uh, about six months months ago I moved to the uh, the the um, Blue Mountains um, and I happened to move in three doors down from an illustrator called uh, Aaron Aaron Bladley. And uh, he did uh, a book called Pig the Pug and another one called Film of the Unicorn, which have become huge hits, I think, all around the world. Um, nice. um, and yeah, it was right next door. I'd see him driving around in his fancy sports car. Was, he sold a lot of children's books. Yeah, he must have. Yeah. How many children's books do you have to have to sell to get a fancy, fancy sports car? Uh, quite a few. <laughs> quite a few. We've got Bold Eagle for the US. Yes. Beaver oh, yeah. for Canada? Yeah, what what so beaver or moose? I was expecting a moose. Beaver's pretty cool. Oh. Beavers are very cool. Yeah. Were we talking about beavers in the last stream? I think I was going on about their I think um, so. uh their, their architectural building styles. Mm. Alright, I'm just putting a little I'm I'm sorry for I'm I'm gonna do anything horrifically offensive to the Scottish people, but I thought I'd is that a Scottish hat? Is that a thing? Can you the, have a Scottish hat? The paddy hat. I always thought it was Irish, but I'm not sure. 
Oh, it oh, could really? be some. I yeah. know. Uh, oh, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, okay. well, it could be both. Have to correct us if that's a, if that's yeah. The appropriate well, hat on it. D, you can be. You can be in charge of that. Um, I'm sure that's the equivalent of the uh, um, uh, hat with the uh, the wine bottle, with the corks on the it. The corks in it. Nobody, nobody in Australia has ever worn. But is is. Uh, have you guys um, thought of, yeah, Australians, like the picturesque Australians, like kind of wearing, is, I don't know if that's got out of Australia, is it like with the brimmed hat with corks hanging down? Um, Surely. Is that a cliche? I feel like it is, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Okay, we've got a unicorn there, we've got a quokka. Um, gosh, we're going to need a bigger car. Um, uh, what we were doing last time was... I think I think maybe we're just going to have a series of trailers coming out the back that we can fill with 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 other animals. So I might start just working one in there, and I think I'll give a, uh, a go of a proud American bald eagle. Um, oh, it is Scottish. Cool. There we go. The hat is a Tom oh. Tom O'Shanter. Tam O'Shanter. Tam O'Shanter. Thanks, Chris. There you oh, go. All learning. Thanks, Chris. He's saying our animal is a unicorn. I don't think we take ourselves too seriously. So I think you've got creative license. Thanks, D. It's not a joke, though, isn't it? Like, they, they, that's actually their national animal, I think. Incredible. Yeah. God, that's so cool. I wish we had something like that. Do you actually know what the national animal of Australia is? It's like, going to be the kangaroo and the emu, right? Because that's on our... Oh, so we've just, we've just got two. I think so. Oh, okay. It's not a quokka. Okay. It's either that or a drop be. bear. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What are some other suggestions we've got coming through, Flynn? Uh, well, beaver we had. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got to represent Canada. I'm trying to collect them all. There's some great questions in here. Just keep them going because um, we've got to keep Johanna on her toes. She's going to collect them for us. So. Sure, <laughs> sure. This is always a busy stream for Joe because she's going to make sure she doesn't miss anybody. And if we do miss it, feel free to throw it in again as we're as we're going through. I'd love to get like a really multicultural thing happening. I want to learn about your national animal. Um, okay, fun fact about you. our um, our crest. So the Australian crest is a kangaroo and an emu holding a shield. Um, and it's a kangaroo and an emu because they can't go backwards. They only yeah. go forward. That's a fun fact. Did we draw it? We did it. You did a platypus at some point as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember working a platypus in uh, a little while ago. Okay, so I got a uh, little beaver coming in here, and I thought he could have a spirit level doing a bit of <laughs> carpentry. He can have a little pencil behind his ear. Awesome. So I got to have a bit of that, that classic beaver tail coming out in the background. I wonder if they actually uh, actually have cross hatched tails, or if that's just uh, sort of their the, tails. Yeah, you know they always have the the tail like that with the the, yeah. the, the cross hatches on it. I wonder what it actually looks like. I looked up beaver tails, and it's a restaurant chain in Canada. Cool. There you go. <laughs> bold See, eagles someone... aren't bold. Yeah, but I know, that, that, I know, that's, that's I'm, true. I'm aware of that. Poetic license. Yeah. Artistic yeah. license. Yeah. It's a huge deal in America, isn't it? Like, uh, you it's illegal to have any, like having a single bald eagle feather is, is like, uh, it, I mean, it's, it's against the law and it? there's sort of incredible fines and people end up going to jail for having sort of um, yeah, because I think they're quite rare and they were hunted for a long time. Right. And it's their national animal, so they're incredibly serious about protecting the bald eagle. Mm. Um, yeah, no, they don't play around with that. It's like, hey man, what did um, you go to jail for? Oh, uh, embezzling funds. <laughs> what are you in here for? Feathers. There was an incredible podcast I listened to a little while ago about a guy who did end up going to jail for stealing something like a half a million dollars worth of rare feathers from a museum. Oh, wow. Um, uh, because he got really into making lures for fly fishing. 
And apparently there's a massive black market in fancy feathers for fishing lures. Wow. Um, all right. Okay. I've got heaps of suggestions here, if you like. I mean, I'm obviously happy. Sure, to sure. I'm just too. looking at uh, Jane Carvello calling in from Brazil. Hello, Jane. Thank you for stopping by awesome. um, and saying she would like to have some uh, macaws. Well, Mac I I'm going to start on a macaw. Let me know of any other suggestions, Flynn. Oh, well, there's, uh, there's, there's heaps. Macaw might be good for something. Okay, you got cool. heaps. Oh, it's terrible. I've done too many streams now that all my, my uh, I've, I've, I was about to tell my almost getting parrot fever story, but I've um, already been that. We um, have told the parrot parrot fever and everything's, everything ended up being okay with that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. It's all good. I think um, parrots in the Blue Mountains are, are doing all right. <laughs> uh, just a, another kind of streaming thing. Uh, we always make a bit of a joke that, because uh, you're using a Carl T. Webster brush here. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. and, uh, we were having a stream on 3d. Okay. I thought we escaped. <laughs> yeah. I thought we escaped Kyle's <laughs> amazing breadth of, of brushes. We were, uh, we we're in substance, which is like a, a, a 3d program that is, is owned by Adobe. It's not part of creative cloud yet. And, uh, yeah. and he came out and he's like, yeah, and you can just get like any of these really cool brushes and just like start painting. I'm like, oh my God, it's a Carl T. Rose brush again. Like we can't escape the, the talent of Kyle. And his brushes. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Our state animal in Montana is the grizzly bear. That's a pretty, pretty cool uh, state animal. I didn't realize that that America had like state animals. State animal as well. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, well, I might, I might try and start up a, uh, well, do you have any, uh, um, Suggestion to Why don't like I throw in a couple record? that we've collected? Uh, macaw. Okay. Oh, did, well, we did a macaw. Uh, Wolverine. Okay. Horse. Oh, very cool. Ten, uh, ta oh, I can't say that. I'm so sorry. Uh, Teotra Tara Lizard. How good. Pronunciation Flynn. I'm going to look that up. Um, there's a duck, of course. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Well, um, let, let me start on this uh, grizzly, and um, maybe I can incorporate some of those animals riding on the on the, the back of the grizzly. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so the, the interesting thing about drawing animals is that you have just like a couple of different archetypes for, for, for layouts for animals, and then it's just sort of like finding the thing that, that I, is, is characteristic of, of um, of each individual animal based on that existing mm. um, template. So maybe I could do, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to try and incorporate a, a sort of speed drawing lesson into, into this stream as well. Cool. So um, um, if I bring out another brush and start sketching up, maybe I'll just sketch out this bear. So we've got um, um, the head of the bear, shoulders, there's a dip down to the back, we've got a big back of the bear there. Um, and we're going to have one foot there, another one coming forward, it's running. And there's so many things, like say I was going to draw a, uh, a, a, a pig or something. Mm. If you look, so many of the shapes are similar. So if I have a big circle for the, for the back hind quarters, the, 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 the the, the, the leg comes forward at the start and then pivots back and then comes back down. You can kind of see um, a similar similar kind of motion um, in, in the way um, all these these different animals. It's like it's like yeah you've just got this sort of underlying structure to how um, quadrupeds work and then you're sort of just tweaking the vector lines that, that you have with, with those um, and it's it's interesting it's sort of very subtle actually how small some of the differences are um um to to, to get two very very different looking animals anyway i find that that kind of stuff interesting that's, keep that's, going that's, with my bear. that's super cool so like as you're drawing the outside are you, are you thinking about the anatomy on the inside like you're drawing very very quickly um yeah yeah you do have to have a little bit of a underlying idea of what's what's going on inside and just i mean i i, I don't know their anatomy particularly well or anything like that but something about quadrupeds um they have sort of like these these, these very big masses of, of of muscle on on say like the tops of the shoulder so in instead of uh 
um, um, having a, a neck go straight to the body like that, I have to remind myself there's going to be this big shoulder mass coming in here. Mm. So little things like that will sort of factor into what on the face of it looks like a much more simple, simple drawing. Um, all right, let's let's race ahead with uh, this this bear. Interested to know what anyone else is in the chat is uh, um, doing today. If people are drawing or working or, or just just hanging out today, always always keen to hear what people are up to. All right, we're going to get that big shoulder and then sweep it right around. Get those legs in. Raphael said, that's amazing. Yes, it's pretty incredible watching uh, watching Bill work. Oh, thanks, guys. Steve helped me out with the pronunciation before. Tua, tua Tara. <laughs> thanks. Tua Tara. So what, thanks what, what is that one? Uh, it's like a little... Um, uh, where are we? It's like a lizard. Oh, um, right. It looks okay. a lot like a, like a um, blue tongue. Australian right, blue tongue. Right, like okay. Maybe a cross between a blue tongue and like a, a, a thorny lizard. Mm. Pretty cool little dude. Endemic to New Zealand. There you go. There you go. I always think about moas and kiwis. Just hanging out, Tia said. That's cool. Great. Johanna's hanging out. It's like the best thing to do. It's Friday here. Yeah. Which is always good. Hope you've all had a had a nice week. Or a productive week. Or a chilled out week. Calvin's vibing, that's cool. Dee's always drawing. Yes, you are. What are you drawing today, Dee? Let us know. We've been drawing quite a lot in our Discord, and when I say we, I mean everybody else but me. But um, oh yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe a Discord shout out if you guys want. Um, you can jump on in whether you draw or you don't. Um, we've got our Discord channel that Johanna can share in the chat. Jump along and hang out with us um, around the streams. There's been a lot of um, design challenges happening there, and people sharing work and asking for advice, and yeah, just generally hanging out. We've been doing some like. Um, well, Johanna's been doing some um, mini streams as well in there, um, oh, jumping, so cool. jumping into Dimension and just kind of hanging out and, and creating, which you're all welcome to do as well. Welcome to join us, hang out. What's uh, Dimension? Is that the 3D program you're talking about? Mm, yeah. Cool, cool. I was playing around with uh, Adobe Aero, the, um, the augmented reality app uh, oh, yeah. recently. That made me really want to try out 3D stuff again. It's so cool what you can do with that. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier these days. That's the sort of stuff you used to have to like have a really beefy machine and do a lot of rendering and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, yeah. But now it's like on your phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's amazing how how accessible all that stuff is now. Yeah, but it can be. It's it's almost like a um, it gets. It gets almost distracting. You sort of like you you find yourself doing a little bit of animation and a little bit of 3D and a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and you can kind of spread yourself a bit thin. I think sometimes um, definitely trying yeah. to engage with, with all the. I mean, some people can do it. There's um um I'm trying to remember. Have you, have you ever worked with the guys at uh, Super Vixen Flynn? I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're they're awesome, but they're they're amazing in that like they just kind of went and learned every program, and it's just these two guys. I know they they hire extra people, but mm. they can just do a little bit of everything. It's amazing what they produce with just such a small studio. Yeah, it is incredible. Yeah, I didn't realize it was just the two of them. Um, they do like yeah VFX sort of stuff for movies and everything. I'll just share it in chat if anyone wants to check them out. Actually, um, mm. they're, they're 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 Sydney based, I think. Yeah. All right, what are some other suggestions coming through? Um, well, I've got to say, I love that duck riding the bear. The duck is Great. in charge. <laughs> I love that the ducks just always have like a look of superiority over everybody else. I love this yeah, like, yeah, attitude. Yeah. He, could, he, could, he could be directing this bear along. <laughs> um, so we could do the lizard. I've, I've, I've kind of got it 
Actually, oh, you got the lizard down there. Yes, you did. <laughs> it doesn't look what, very lizard-like. What about a moa? A moa? Is moa the, the big bird? The big I might have bird. To quickly, I might have to quickly have a look at a moa. Um, this would terrify, absolutely terrify my wife if she ever saw a moa. Oh, wow. I was driving along in the car the other day and just a couple of casual emus on the side of the road, just hanging out in Lithgow, of all places. Really? Yeah, it's surreal. I think they were behind a fence. Like, I think they must have been like, I don't think you can domesticate an emu, but they were, they were, um, they were there. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd never seen an emu in the wild before and then just popped up in Lithgow. Wow. Weird. I don't think I've ever, yeah, seen an emu not at a, like at a farm or some sort of space where you go to see emu. Like, yeah. I've never unexpectedly seen an emu. Yeah. <laughs> They are kind of terrifying. There's something about these big birds that I don't know if it was just like a, a Jurassic Park that did it, but um, mm. uh, I don't know. You sort of sense the dinosaur in them sometimes. They've got that, uh, that, that vicious look about them sometimes in their eyes. Alan says, why do bears run with their mouth open? They're looking for a dentist. Uh, Stacy, I love the bear so much. That's such a cool bear, isn't it? A frog as a suggestion? Yes. Awesome. Oh, yeah. The mowers were so huge. Yeah, I just did a quick Google and wow. How big yeah. are we talking? Like two, three meters? Uh, there's some like comparison things. Uh, let me see. Yeah, like maybe three or four times the size of an emu. Wow. Three times okay. the I've, height. Three times the height of a. Of I've, a human. I've undersized. Uh, okay, maybe this can be a baby moa, and maybe we'll have. Um, <laughs> let's get a big brush. And this can be uh, this can be mama moa coming in from the top. So we've just got a bit of beak action going on. There you go. It sets the scale for us. Um, <laughs> That's <okay>. awesome. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's so good. Um, okay, maybe I'll, I'll I'll give a frog a go here. How often does a I frog come I... up in in your drawing? Um, <laughs> um, in increasingly more. I had a. Um, I've been doing some work on. Uh, uh, some proposals for children's books recently, mm. and um, uh, I was I was sending some ideas back and forth with uh, this publisher, and um, I think I was trying to be a bit sort of academic or highfalutin with my picture book ideas. I was sort of trying to get lots of life lessons in there and important sort of social issues into this into this uh, this picture book. Mm. And they kept coming back and saying, like, look, it's the eight-year-old boys. You've got you to cater more towards eight-year-old boys. And my <laughs> manager said, Bill, you just got to put a farting frog in there. There's got to be a frog that farts all the time. And he's called, like, Gassy Gary or something like that. Right. Um, and I, <laughs> I didn't want to do it. And then eventually I went with it. And I was, I was happy I did it. I had to, I had to sort of uh, <laughs> try and reconnect with the eight-year-old self that just wanted to see a farting frog. You catered to the audience. Yeah. 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 Did you end up going? Yeah, okay. Just his name's Fighting Gary, or uh, I think it, I think it was either what was it? It was either Gassy Gary or um, uh, Fighting Fighting Frog. Seems. I think it was Tootin Tobias was another option that we that we were looking at. <laughs> so yeah, lots of stuff you can do with it. Cool. I like this guy. I thought they hopped. I didn't realize they were propulsed forward through gas. So. Oh yeah, yeah. We're yeah. learning a lot of useful facts. <laughs> um, Steve's saying okay. that Carl T. Webster gets frog a lot as a suggested subject. That's interesting. Well, he's got that fantastic frog on a unicycle illustration. That's right. Cover, doesn't he? Yeah. I keep seeing that one. Yeah. Um, Canadian moose is surprisingly yes. I, I have seen a couple of. I was just looking at Festus's comment. Um, they are extraordinary how big, big uh, a proper Canadian moose is. Let's let's just mm. quickly look up a, 
moose reference. Oh, jeez. I'm doing a bit of uh, risky Google image searching. Hopefully nothing too intense comes up. Oh, they've got such interesting shapes. Heads mooses. Okay, I'm, I'm keen to give this one a go now. Can you let me know of any other interesting suggestions and we'll see if I can factor them in, Flynn? Yeah. Um, axolotl. Axolotl, yeah. <laughs> cool. Sloth. A challenge. Yes, a sloth. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sloth. Yeah. Underrated animal. Sloth. Sloth. Yeah. Um, Sloth? How, what's the plural? Uh, penguin. Mm -hmm. Timberwolf. Oh boy, yeah. Bison. All good. Okay, cool. Well, I will try and factor a couple of those in as we go. Um, oh boy, those are... The antlers are amazing. They're very tricky to draw. I don't really know what I'm doing with those. What did the buffalo say to his son when he left for college? <laughs> I don't know, Flynn. Tell me. Bison. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right, you're a new father. You gotta, you gotta practice this stuff. <laughs> oh, cass cassowary. My, uh, Ooh, cassowary. my, my wife's probably most hated, hated, uh, hated animal. So she has. Oh, my yeah, wife has she... a bit of a fear, a phobia of birds. Um, Ooh, and, right. those, okay. and the, the big birds, like cassowaries, uh, emu, all that sort of stuff. Um, mm. Every now and then, I'll I'll get a photo of one of those like birds, just like when they're like hor horrifyingly staring down the camera or something, and I'll just <laughs> send her a message. <laughs> it's good banter. Uh, how, where does where does she stand on uh, ducks? Has that become a point of contention? Or no, no, ducks are cool. You, you can... ducks, ducks are friends. Are cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Mm, I'm glad that's that's resolved. Mm. Cassowary mm. are dinosaurs, yes. Kanga mouse. Speaking of uh, kanga, kanga mice, um, do, you, do you know the uh, the British comic Tank Girl? Yes. Have we talked about this before on the live stream? Have you ever seen the, the 90s film of Tank Girl? I have, yeah. Oh, it's so strange. And it's got Ice T, the rapper, as a kangaroo in it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't remember that part. I saw it when I was pretty you? young. Yeah. Well, no, it is it is uh, gangster rapper Ice T in a kangaroo suit for that whole movie. Wow. It's surreal. Okay. All right. I'm taking up a lot of time on this this slightly doleful looking moose. Oh wow! It is it is a. Uh, now I'm losing a bit of a sense of proportion here. What have I done there? All right. So, what was some of the animals that we were going to have on top of the moose? Uh, be... Timberwolf, penguin, axolotl, sloth. Sloth. I think we've got to have a sloth in there. Um. What? What is the the sloth look? Oh yeah, they have got those those funny markings on their on their eyes, and they all kind of have like a, a sort of dorky halfway part in their hair. Mm. You have two versions of Photoshop. I do have two versions of Photoshop. Um, uh, I'm I'm running the 2019 CC right now. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a couple things I, I prefer in either one, so I kind mm. of I just kept kept both going at the same time. Around. Yeah. Uh, a cute little sloth here. Having Wolverine a and honey badger were two more suggestions. I wonder if you, yeah. Stacey, you suggested honey badger, like from the anything to do with the Marvel comics? Because every time I hear Wolverine, um, there's a clone of um of the female wolverine from the comics i can't remember her name at the moment uh laura and um 
and then the other younger version of the clone thinks that Wolverine is such a cool nickname, um, but she tries to think of her own. There's like this whole story's arc of her trying to f discover what her like cool superhero name should be, and she comes up with Honey Badger. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Honey Badgers really became kind of a, there was that one video on YouTube that kind of became a meme and Honey Badger really mm -hmm. took off as a, uh, um, as a, as a cultural phenomenon for a little while. I really like the sleeping, sleeping sloth. Oh uh, yeah. Cool. All right, I'm going for, a, I have no idea what a wolverine looks like, so I'm just going a sort of generic furry animal with uh, Marvel comic overtones going on here. <laughs> Attack mode. Thanks for all the suggestions so far, everyone. Yeah, they've been great. Oh, that's so funny, Stacey, that it's unrelated. Yeah, it's... Yeah, Honey Badger don't care. I think that yeah. was a meme, wasn't it? They're like super tough, like, didn't they like attack like much larger animals, much tougher animals, but they're like... Yeah, yeah, and I think they're like resistant to venom or something like that. I remember something about it being bitten by a snake and they're just going for a sleep and then waking up and carrying on with its day. Carrying on. Off I go. Honey badger stuff. Yeah. Um, I gotta look up a picture of an axolotl. I'm kind of fascinated to know. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to try and spell that. I have to spell Axe, it. It's got a Y in there. Ax. A X O L O T L is what I have here. Oh. It's a lot of, oh, it's nothing on the end, that's all it is. Oh gosh, they're so weird. <laughs> <laughs> they're fantastic. I think I might go for a sort of uh, sophisticated, well-to-do axolotl. Okay, I, I think this is this is my first ever axolotl drawing, everyone, so give, give me a break. I'm, I'm just making it up as I go. Anybody ends up with any other sort of general illustration or working in illustration or drawing questions? Feel free to pop them in as well, and I can I can try and chat and draw at the same time. Little, got such funny little eyes. They're just these sort of little little pinpricks. Yeah, I think the, you think the craziest things would be like in the imagination, but there's so much crazy, weird stuff in nature that you can really just draw inspiration from, from the real yeah, world. Absolutely. I used to, I used to um, spend a lot of time drawing um, deep sea creatures. Like uh, I was about to say that. Yeah. Um, all, all those kind of things are just extraordinary. They're so weird, and it's it's fascinating. They keep um, finding uh, stuff, finding finding new ones. Yeah. yeah. There's these amazing live streams, which are um, like these, um, uh, I think it's a unmanned submarine going around. And um, it's being, or the, the cameras on the submarine are being watched by a bunch of biologists. Mm. Um, so you get this sort of just like spot the, the, the weird thing. So you have a bunch of biologists saying like, oh my gosh, it's a spotted so-and-so something or other um and uh yeah you can just go on these sort of spotting adventures mm. in the deep sea with, with biologists they're really fun are they by is it like a robot like is it like a drone style thing or are they yeah actually yeah, yeah. down there because that would be terrifying uh no i think it's i think it's a robot maybe we could go to the sea maybe that's where we go next Ooh. yeah doing a deep sea one. Oh well uh I, um in this picture. All right. 
a, uh, it's very fancy. Yeah. yeah, he's quite a sophisticated X level. Get some Sergeant Peppers, Lonely Hearts Complained kind of vibes going on with the jacket. I don't know, quite trendy. <laughs> Looks like he's in the cast of Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> have you have you pre pre booked your tickets? Uh, yeah, we're we're trying. Well, you can't pre book, can you? No. Oh, I have no idea. I have oh, no okay. Idea. No, no, no. We've got um, alerts. Uh, three separate reminders in our calendar. Really? Book. Yeah. Wow. Um, we were in New York and we really wanted to see it, but we but it was so expensive. The choice was, do we go to Mexico for a few days? <laughs> or do we oh, do we go to Hamilton one night? And we decided that it would it was it was actually tough to make that decision. But yeah, we went to Mexico. Yeah, um, yeah I think that I think that's fair enough. But it's on Disney Plus, so we've already watched it like three times. Oh, cool, cool. cool. Yeah. Really good. Um, well, I think uh, I better get a penguin in there for good measure. Thank you to whoever was suggesting that. Mm. Calvin saying, I mostly draw birds. It's cool. I'm, it's a I'm fun a to draw. Bird fan as well. Mm. Birds are great. A stingray as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, we should have one of those big uh, flying, the big flying manta rays. Jumping ones. Crazy how they jump out of the water. Oh, extraordinary. Kathleen's in the chat. Hello, Kathleen. Lovely to to see you. Phenomenal hey, illustrator. All right, I'm just uh, penguin here, catching up with some current events and issues in the paper. <laughs> I think I I'd like to try a manta ray. Um, I think it's getting very big here. I might uh, shrink a couple of these guys down and go in here. Um, am I brave enough to... Uh, I'm just going to go for it. I, I don't really know what a manta ray looks like, but um, I might try and just... Doing it without uh, a reference. No reference. I'm going wow. in without a without a wire. <laughs> I know they've got those, those, those big crazy gulpy mouths. So I'll start with that. It's a big happy mouth. And he's got those funny little mandible things on the side. Hmm. Um, and I guess he would have his sort of flap is flapping away. And they've got uh, big crazy long tails. My grandfather once stepped on a stingray and got stung by one. Oh, really? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it sounded completely excruciating. Um, not sure where he was, where he was stepping on stingrays. Hopefully the stingray wasn't, wasn't too damaged in the experiment. Like, it's not, it's not anatomically correct, but I'm going to say it's got the, the spirit of the manta ray has been, been locked in. <laughs> I like the little, right. little things at the front. Yeah, they kind of look like tiny little hands. And they've got those little grills underneath, but you can't really see that from this angle. Where have we, where have we not traveled? What, what, like, continent? I don't think we've got anything from, like, Africa either. Yeah, I think um, Africa, maybe South America. Um, we do jellyfish as well. Yeah, I think maybe I should have some sort of rolling tank of water coming in behind everyone, so we can incorporate some of those aquatic life. Uh, okay. Um, This could be like a big 
jar of water here. Maybe we can fill that. Blue. Um, all right. Uh, jellyfish, right. Don't you think? Jellyfish? Yeah, yeah, I gotta have a jellyfish. Very good. I feel like I'm cheating a little bit by just putting cute googly eyes on, on everything. <laughs> I, I, I don't think there's any... It's only so wrong your drawings can go once I've got a couple of proper googly eyes on them. Uh, Kathleen, that brush, this brush is so tasty. Yeah, this is one of the amazing Kyle brushes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a really nice one. I think, I think this brush is a bit of cheat as well. It's kind of like, um, it, it's inherently nice to look at. So the drawing sort of, you're halfway there if you're using a good brush already. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it covers up lots of your uh, mistakes and things. Mm. <laughs> and um, if you've just joined right. us, uh, maybe you're on maybe you're on YouTube. I see there's like a bunch of new people along. Uh, we're taking your suggestions, so um, here for about another thirty six minutes or so. I think we have on our little timer there. Um, we're taking cool. yeah your suggestions. And the chat that we're using is on Behance. So if you're watching on YouTube, jump over to behance.net slash live. Um, we're here for a while, hanging out with you, taking your suggestions. Absolutely. Um, okay, I think uh, based on our previous conversation, I should try out a, um, a deep sea spooky fish. Mm. You could pretty much just draw anything because the craziest stuff is down there. <laughs> yeah, just fish done. Um, yeah, one, one creepy thing that I've discovered, which is really good for drawing monsters is Animals with like protruding teeth that sort of come out at the wrong angle uh, are, are much creepier than uh, sort of properly aligned teeth for some reason. I'm sure there's just some inherent bias towards proper dentist work, but um, <laughs> a lot of these fish are just like your average 20 year old. They sort of stop going to the dentist at 14 and then they go back until they're, uh, you know, in their 40s. <laughs> and this is where you end up. It's a lesson to all of us. This is one of those terrifying, like, deep sea fish with the the light on the head, like the lantern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. It's got to have the little. I think like, it's how is angler that fish? Angler fish. That's right. How is that a thing? That nature. What? What is going on? Do you know the one that's like this, and it's got these two eyes that are inside its head, and its head's transparent? Have you seen that one, Flynn? Oh, I think so. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, the eyes just point straight up, but it like the top of its head's become transparent. Yeah, it's like it couldn't be bothered to move its eyes to the top of its head. It's like oh, I'll just make my skull transparent. <laughs> that seems like the best way to go about it. <laughs> spiny spines on the back. I guess this is the thing, like, if you left me in the dark for my entire life, I'd probably look like this as well. Right. Probably don't do a lot of self-care. There's no mirrors. a lot of moisture. Yeah, 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 they're not checking up on this kind of thing. <laughs> Which is, maybe, maybe there's lessons to be learned from deep sea fish here. Uh, they're mm. not, they're not wrapped up in the aesthetics of things. You know the thing about deep sea fish? They're not shallow. Hey, Tom. <laughs> did you just come up with that? Is that I did just come up with that. I'm really proud of myself. Very good, Flynn. Yeah, yeah, that's why they pay you the, the big bucks. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, cool. I've well, got a couple of buddies in there now. Maybe I should give this thing some wheels because um, it's got to keep up with the car. And if I care about anything with drawing, Flynn, you know this, it's about realism. Yeah. Hardcore realism. Absolutely. Okay, I think those wheels can definitely drawing sustain facts. the weight of that tank. Yeah. Um, okay, too easy. All right, um, I'm blanking now. What would some other suggestions uh, So many, so many. Oh, we, we're going out okay. of the ocean. So um, yep. uh, there was. I think this would be really cool. 
a French Gaelic rooster. It's a very Gaelic fancy rooster. rooster. Um, okay, okay. So fancy. Luckily, I've had a, a little bit of practice with this. Um, uh, my partner's uncle, Hans, has a, um, uh, just a, what what you are, what ducks are to you, Flynn, is nothing uh-huh. towards how this man feels about chickens. Wow. He has a, uh, like, you go to his house and it's kind of subtle in a way, like, you, you don't realize at first, like, there'll be a, a picture of a chicken on the wall and then you'll be peeking up a piece of cutlery and that's got chickens on it and your plate has chickens on it and your cup's got drawings of chickens on it. Like everything is just subtly chicken themed. <laughs> like, it's, it's kind of incredible. Like in a horror movie where you just kind of realize that you're in something just like, oh my God, everywhere I look, there's, there's chickens everywhere. <laughs> no, Hans is a, is a lovely, lovely man who just has a uh, amazing affinity for chickens. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna have a, a, a nice big old chest. Um, uh, it's going to be quite a proud chicken. So let's have the, the head reared back. Um, uh, they're quite sort of plump and puffy chickens. And then we're going to have some fantastic plumage coming out the back here. Um, All right, I wonder how I make this chicken Gaelic. What makes a Gaelic chicken? I think it's a Gaelic rooster. Rooster, rooster. Right, right shape. I've got to have the, uh, the sort of, I don't know, those wobbly bits going on. Wonderful plumage, yes, exactly. Oh yeah. Uh, that is the rooster on the rugby jerseys, I think, on the French rugby team. Yeah, that oh, makes sense. It's on the crest. I right. think give him a more well, facts. <laughs> hmm. Where else haven't we been? We've been to France now, which is cool. I like that. We've been under the sea. What about the Galapagos Islands? We could get a Galapagos tortoise in. Oh, the tortoise. Well, yeah, absolutely. I love that. So, Have you seen that, well, photo, well, that photo of the tortoise like in the like late 1800s or something like that? And then a photo of him like last year. He's still hanging around. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I saw this incredible video of... 1900s. Um, they, they had uh, this uh, tortoise. I think it was a Galapagos tortoise that they'd had in a breeding program. And this guy had produced hundreds of children or something like that. And they were reintroducing these giant tortoises back into um, their, their um, natural habitat. And the way they do it is because it's out in the wilderness, there's no roads. They just have to distribute tortoises. Get these giant tortoises and put straps on them. And then people strap them on like backpacks. And then there's all these big guys just like walking into the wilderness with these giant tortoises on their backs like backpacks. Um, it's what? amazing. You should look it up. Oh my gosh. The tortoise is totally chill about the whole thing. They're cool. Um, <laughs> and they get a nice place to live. So I think it's a win-win for everyone. It's like, this is fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, what are some more suggestions? Uh, mafia crab. I like that. <laughs> come from a mafia crab. We had, can, we had a mafia animal last this. time, didn't we? Like, um, claws. Yeah. We did, yeah. What um, was that one? Um, there's been a couple of votes as we've gone through for Kiwi. Um, so I feel oh, like yeah? that's been voted for quite a bit. Cute little Kiwis. Yeah, I need to just refresh my Kiwi memory. Oh, no, yeah, that's the fruit. Oh, yeah, they are very cute, aren't they? Yeah. I've got a, a big fat, um, and then a little, little head with a on 
for a run. Oh, the Codfather was uh, what we did last time. The Codfather, that's Thanks. what it was. Still trying to think about how to make a, a crab a mafia crab. Um, um, but they had a crab sort of standing up. Sorry, I'm having to work this out as I go. Um, I guess it could have classes. It's a, it's a good mafia first step. Um, with its eyes on stems, and it can't look too happy about things. Um, I guess it would need some sort of... I think this crab's going to start looking a bit more like a Blues Brother crab instead of a Mafia crab. <laughs> Worst things have happened to it. Um, I always think of the Futurama crab citizen snips. I know you don't watch uh, TV. It's, um, fine, it's fine, fine. Right. There's, a, there's a great crab in there called Citizen Snips, and he's cute. <laughs> citizen Snips, it's fantastic. Cute little bit and flip our crabby crab friend over. Nice, quick little duplicate there. Do you ever use the symmetry tool? I do. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't use it uh, a lot for when I'm sketching, but I use it quite a lot when I'm doing, maybe um, our crap front can be sitting on the side of that thing. Um, I, I use it quite a bit if I'm doing any kind of like uh, design, like sort of like, Kind of filigree ornate stuff i love doing it for for that kind of thing so mm. it's really fun a, a fun fact with the symmetry tool is that it's you think like you always hear that like a uh like a a, a beautiful human face um uh is symmetrical mm. um but it's amazing how odd faces look when you sort of draw like when you when you flip them over so if i try and draw one side of a face and this is very rough but say i do I, I mean, and it's not going to work perfectly because the symmetry is not going to be exactly right but i've tried drawing faces with the symmetry tool before mm. and it really doesn't work like people if they look too symmetrical they just look quite odd um and i mean this this will be a bad example but just as, as, a, as a rough guide um oh, everything's a bit haywire there um if I flip flip the face over, there's something about the eyes sort of pointing in exactly the same direction. Right. Um, it just doesn't look quite right. Yeah. And I think what it is is that when you're looking at someone, their eyes aren't actually pointing in exactly the same direction. Everyone's very, very slightly cross-eyed all the time. Right. Um, and that just looks natural to you because you've got a focal point. Um, I was and... I was chatting. Yeah, it's funny you should say. I was chatting to someone else on stream, and it may may have been you. I'm not sure. Let me know if it was. But um, and they were talking about there's um, there's uh, like in in TikTok, I think it is. Um, you can flip the camera the other way so you can see how people see you. Because like when you're oh, looking right. into a mirror, when you're looking into a mirror, you you see you see like yourself, but other people actually see the opposite version of that yeah and there's yeah. some and there's a way that you can do it because i can do it in here i flipped the camera before and they're like oh that looks really weird um because right, your face isn't right. symmetrical you never see yourself like that unless it's recorded or unless it's oh, digitally so flipped um yeah and, and, yeah and you, and you look weird like you don't recognize yourself because because of the same thing yeah yeah uh i'm just looking at the um um uh oh thank you eric smith very very nice comment um uh, I've seen lots of stuff about dogs coming in. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, sort of um, what, do you, what do you call different kinds of dogs? Breeds. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, there was a I think golden, I'm do golden my... retriever and uh, and and collie in there. Wait, what? Well, right. which, which way are you going? I think I'm just going to go. 
um, my generic black scruffy dog. I, I haven't done one in a little while and I don't know, I find it kind of therapeutic. Um, this is a nice one. This is kind of like a silhouette drawing. Um, it's got his tiny little body. Um, Little ear coming out. Might have him dipping into the stratosphere. Um, all right, what what came after um, uh, mafia mafia crab? There were some other suggestions you had, Flynn. Uh, Lassie the collie, Benji the terrier, golden retriever, pig, Siamese cats. Um, and then okay. we're chatting about the, uh, uh, lady in the tramp cartoon. Have you seen, you've seen that oh, one, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 A long, long time ago. Um, yeah. Well, Siamese cat. They're kind of fun. They're cool. Well, I was, I was having a bit of a Speaking challenging of last, <laughs> last stream. Yeah. So maybe, maybe I'll try and do a, uh, um, a Siamese cat drawing now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I feel like there's there's lots of artists that had some period where they were drawing lots and lots of cats, and I've never really had that 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 time where I've I've, I've spent the time to really work out what the how cats work. Mm. Um, they just do whatever they want. They just do whatever they want exactly. Mm. Um, I love that we're just getting like every everyone's favorite type of dog. In chat. <laughs> right. Cavoodle, they're pretty cute. British Bulldog. Oh yeah. Vizsla, a, um... they're cool dogs. What kind of dog is it? Um, Vizsla, I'm probably saying it wrong. I used to say Vishla, oh. but... Um, what is Vizsla. that? I don't know what it is. Um, the, uh, our old next door neighbors, um, when we lived in, Lura with this, this really lovely couple and they had a very, very cute um, um, dog who was a cavoodle called uh, Ponyo. Um, and uh, Ponyo has, a, has an Instagram account which is, is, is very successful and it's been a sort of point of contention secretly between Ponyo and I about who has, the, has more followers. Oh, right. Ponyo was always slightly ahead of me. I don't do very well on social media but it, it, it sort of grinds my gears at this dog who can't draw at all can i say um <laughs> uh, uh, never it, picked it, up it a pencil constantly. in its life <laughs> i know and it's just cruising through on its good looks this whole time yeah you can't compete oh, well, with cute I'll, animals it's no it's no it's, 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 it's an unfair contest um and uh pull that guy in now Something oh, that's... about the, the... What were you going to say, Phil? I was just going to say we have some clarification on the on the, on the the Vizslas. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Uh, they're, they're like red pointers. Yeah, well, they are a red pointer. So, yeah. All right. Siberian Husky. Mm. They're cool dogs. What about an Afghan Hound? Do you like Afghan Hounds? Mm, they're cool. I think they need to come back into fashion. It's funny where you go. Like, um, I don't know if it's like this in other parts of the world, but certainly in in sydney um different suburbs have like different trends of dogs oh right you ever notice that there's so many labradors like down the south coast um huh. i mean in, i'm in this i'm in the city near, near sydney city in the eastern suburbs and there's so many border collies and golden and goldens oh, right. it's like yeah it's crazy and when i was in redfern um heaps of like greyhounds i would see yeah great greyhounds are very very popular on the field i've noticed that one mm. So it looks like a winerama too. Yes, exactly. I always get them mixed up when I see them. It's 
good. I'm going to have to draw more cats. They've got a really fun look about them. Mm. They have so much attitude. You cat or dog person or neither? Uh, me? We'll split the audience, yeah. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> yeah, sorry, dog person. Dog. Are you planning on getting a dog? You're out. You're up, you're up there now. You've got your got your place. It's, That's what it's people do. A consideration. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. No, it is. It's, um, the next on the step. cards. Um, yeah, not quite sure. It'll probably be. We've got got a we've got a an okay backyard, but it it's probably a more of a small dog backyard than a than a big dog one. So they're probably looking at something small. But what kind of dog we're going to get? Not not quite sure yet. Um, Yeah, other got quite a lot of stuff happening here. I like these long sprawling drawings, they're really fun. Mm. Where you just kind of keep going. Does a meerkat count as a type of cat to draw? Because that was a suggestion as well. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, what's what's the, uh, the meerkat thing? They kind of... Is it their arms like this? Is that the thing they do? I think they're like, yeah, little... They drop their arms. Yeah, they up or down. It's like meerkats are down. Yeah. Oh no, you're right, they're down. Oh, no, the kind of... Oh yeah, it is that kind of casual thing. Yeah. I think there's another, I think there's another animal that does the same thing that like pops up and does have its arm up, but I can't think of it. Hmm. We've got a lot of dog people in the chat. Stacy's dog person. You have those two beautiful dogs. That's awesome. Sadly allergic to cats. Yeah, that comes up a bit these days, a lot more. People allergic mm. to cats. Um, have you had the illustrator Joe Lee on, on the live stream before? Sorry. Joy, Joy Lee? Uh, uh, no, but it's, it's confusing. There's Joy Lee and there's Joe Lee. Both, Joe both Lee. illustrators. No, I definitely haven't heard her on the live stream. Oh, Sounds right. Like... She used to be with the uh, drawing book and she's with Jackie Winston. She's an amazing illustrator, but she is a, uh, a, a very passionate cat person. If you need equal representation on the, on the live stream. Ah, um, okay. She can talk to you about cats all day. I think that near cat needs to be slightly more submerged in a hole. All right, I think I need another big animal to go in the background here. Do we have any big animal suggestions? Big animal, hmm. Let's see. I'm gonna go hunting what was that? for a big What's animal. That? A Clifford, Clifford was the, the, the big dog, wasn't he? Clifford the big dog, yeah. I don't remember what Clifford looked like. <laughs> It was great. Uh, there was an orca as a suggestion. An orca. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, that, that sounds good. Uh, sorry, I'm going to need some reference for that one as well. Mm. We've got about 15 minutes wow. chat as well. So if there's anything that we've missed, anything you really want to see, any questions for Bill as well? This is the end of this series, which is very bittersweet. It's I know. Been awesome. It's, um, I told you before, but this is one of my favorite streams to do with you. Like, I absolutely enjoy this. I love hanging out with chat and getting getting suggestions from you guys and kind of chilling out. It's such a good thing to do on a Friday. We've been, we were doing it on Tuesday, I think, which was cool, but I quite like doing this mm. on like a Friday. Like, it's like a form of meditation, just hanging out with Bill, watching yeah. you create. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks, Flynn, and, and and yeah, thanks so much, everyone who's who's been tuning in and chatting. It it, it makes it really fun, um, and uh, I love I love doing these. So um, um, I'm sure I will see you all out and about on the internet at, at, uh, in one form or another. But um, yeah, thanks for thanks for me as well. It's it's been really cool. Awesome. A prairie dog pops up with their little hands up. That's what we were thinking. Uh, oh, I thought, I, I, I remember 
visiting my grandmother who lives in New Mexico and they have like prairie dogs are a really big thing there. But I, I thought that was just an Americanization of, um, of meerkat, but obviously they're a, they're a different thing altogether. They're a whole nother thing. Yeah, there you go. Nope. Okay. Uh, Calvin's asking, are you guys going to post this somewhere? Uh, yeah, I, I will post it um, on my uh, Instagram after we come off the stream. Um, and yeah, so you can get it on my Instagram or maybe I'll see if I can post it. I'll send it to Joanna and maybe if she could put it in the Discord. Is that is that a thing? Is that an option? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, cool. That'd be great. Yeah, the one we, we did one and you and you spent a lot of time on a really cool duck. And so I definitely have that saved in my duck folder. Oh, fantastic. It's Your important. Duck folder. <laughs> it's really important. I don't know what I'm gonna use it for, but <laughs> Five years, I'll, Sorry, I'll be going through my reference that. folder and I'll be like, yes, I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> Clifford the mutant dog. Yeah, it was very strange. Like, hey, I've got an idea for a story. I've just got this giant dog. Yeah. Uh, Calvin's asking, can you put it on Behance? That's a great idea. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe I should put a... Um, I'll try and uh, put together a folder of all all the um the drawings i've done uh, i'll make a folder on the hands of, of all of those together yeah that's easy get, to find get all of them if you like. yeah oh i need to update my hands with some some recent projects i'm coming out soon Kidoki. um <laughs> eric's asking um curious if bill can recommend drawing hardware i can't see his hands I'm thinking, is this guy using a mouse? Uh, it's awesome, I appreciate the stream. Oh, cool, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so what I'm working on right now is a, um, a Wacom Cintiq. Um, and any of those that are on the market are, are, are great. So you can get them in all different shapes and sizes. Um, I love drawing on the iPad these days as well. Um, I did used to use a graphics tablet for a long time. But uh, I never quite got freehand sketching on the graphics tablet. Some people are amazing at it, but it, the disconnect never really added up for me. So um, yeah, so that's what I use. So in terms of graphics tablet, the distinction is that the Cintiq you're drawing onto the screen, like you're actually drawing yes. and it's happening there. Yeah. Whereas a graphics tablet is like a secondary peripheral, peripheral device. So it like replaces yeah. your mouse. Yeah. So, so you never really super got into having it over to the side where you can't see it and you're watching the screen be hands over over to the side yes yeah yeah it always felt a little bit off for me but that said my um my partner was watching quite a successful illustrator the other day on skillshare and all her work was done with a trackpad which made me furious but it's proof <laughs> that you can do it anywhere that you want to do it <laughs> oh gosh oh gosh yeah, yeah. so no no excuses mm -hmm. it's always always ways to draw i saw i saw a video of a guy the other day who was um guy who made uh, Microsoft Excel art. So he used the grid structure and the shape tool in Excel to make these quite extraordinary paintings. I mean, I didn't like the paintings, but the fact that they were done in Excel was totally amazing. So mm. wow. you can do it any way you want. But I just put in a little, little baby duck for good measure. Yes. Right, so, um, Stacy just said in chat, I've just got a Cintiq this week and it's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. Um, I did see Timberwolf quite a few times uh, when I asked, well, you know, what, what, what's like a final kind of suggestion? Okay. We have time for okay, one, or, me, one, quick, one or two. We've got about 10 minutes up. left. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. And that should be time for a Timberwolf. Oh, jeez, they are scary looking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, wow. Okay, I'm keen to use this guy's reference. Okay, let me... Um, maybe I'll just draw this guy up in the corner here. Um, 
Okay, let's let's quickly pencil this guy out. I think it's something with this one about the just the eyes emerging from from the the, the, the black fur, which makes him look really scary. Um, Something about the slightly grinning. They've got those big plumes of fur on the side of their face. Mm. Um, got the ears coming out. Um, Where are timber wolves from? Yeah, I don't know. I know there's a isn't there a is there a basketball team who are called the timber wolves? Is that a thing? There's got to be like thousands, right? Like the wildcats. Yeah, yeah, sure. The Northern Rocky not, Mountain Wolf. Is often called a timber wolf. Yeah. There's a Canadian timber wolf as well. I'm guessing. Oh, that's right. It must have been Steve that suggested. I'm sure he's letting me know in chat. Canada. There Thank we go. You, Steve. That's awesome. There's Minnesota timber wolves as well. Oh, is that maybe that's the team I'm talking about? Mm. Sounds about right. So cool. There were so many suggestions. It's always good when we run out. So sorry if we missed your suggestion, but there were so there were so many good ones today. Uh, it's a basketball team. There we go. There you go. Native to the Rocky Mountains as well. This is great. I, I, I love doing these streams because I mean, I've, I don't know if I've ever drawn a, I can't remember the last time I had to draw a wolf and I don't, I've definitely never drawn a timber wolf before. It's, it's, it's great how much I have to sort of try and stretch myself with, with some of these suggestions. I love this like stance that he's got going on. Yeah. Like, the wide know, legs and he's of... kind of looking down. Yeah. It's very cool. Cause it's nothing like the reference picture that you, that you had, like are you just kind of looking at that to be like, Oh, what's the, what's the basic anatomy, but then you're still just drawing it in a different, like, yeah, like a totally kind of different what... pose. Yeah, it's a different pose, but yeah, I'm trying to sort of establish things like the the big mass of fur at the back of the head, mm. and like the way the head's angled down, and like the way the mouth forms. Just little things like that. I'm trying to pick up on, um, and and sort of see if I can make my my own thing out of it. And I think instead of copying the reference exactly, if you're trying to make your own pose, you kind of have to try and come up or or you kind of have to figure out what the, the the nature or the things that make this look like a timber wolf are rather than just replicating that, that one shape. Mm. So you're trying to sort of learn what the object is in reality rather than just replicating that one thing. So um, that'll do for now and I might guy in a little bit. How are we doing for time, Flint? Are we, are we running out or are we okay? Uh, yeah, we've, we've 
We've got five minutes until we're cut off, so I don't know if that's enough time for another drawing. It's up to you. Uh, no, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll just finish this guy up and... We can have a chat. Make him interesting. <laughs> I love the wolf. Yeah, he's cool. He's super cool. Uh, yeah, any last minute questions though? We've got a couple minutes left, so let us know. Maybe I'll give him a bit Keith of Keith is asking, how are the Aussies? We're doing really well over here. Hope you are too. Yeah, yeah, doing, doing just fine. Thanks for asking. Um, all right, let's just make a little bit of space for that guy. Maybe we can... Actually, we should go we'll through go and just have like a look because we've moved so fast along and some people might have missed some of the early stuff. Yeah, so we yeah. should do a little bit of a, a wander through our, our zoo here. Okay. Um, I will go to full screen so you can see what I'm doing. Let us know, chat, um, what your favorite, what's your favorite one? Yeah, yeah, let us know what you like. So, um, yeah, going through the picture, we started off with a Chichi Bang Bang car and uh, our crocodile driving the car, and we had a crocker friend taking a selfie here. Uh, we moved on to the uh, Scottish unicorn. Um, uh, from that, we had a macaw from, um, uh, I think it was Jane in um, Brazil. Um, oh, wow. We had a uh, 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 froggy friend here. We had our bald eagle, um, our beaver doing a bit of carpentry, <laughs> um, our slightly lackluster um, lizard. Uh, we had a, a, a grizzly bear here being directed around by his uh, duck friend. Mm -hmm. There was a, a tiny little baby moa on the back of the um, the bear and big mama baby, big mama moa coming in from, That's, from uh, the top of the frame. It's really terrifying. The, <laughs> the big giant, moa, yeah. Giant yeah. moa, just the beak. It, <laughs> it adds so much, like with all the other illustrations, like in context, like just imagining like what is going yeah, on out yeah. of our frame is really cool. <laughs> cool. Um, oh yeah, we had a, a, a very trendy looking axolotl friend here. Uh, He's pretty for cool. Stroll. Top contender, yeah, I think, slightly. that axolotl. Uh, um, <laughs> doleful looking moose, <laughs> slightly manic uh, wolverine, wolverine. Um, flying into action there. Cute little sloth having a snooze uh, on top of the moose. Um, and we had a manta ray friend flying through the air majestically. So happy. Above. Uh, scrolling back down, we had a um, penguin catching up on the day's events in the paper. Uh, we had a, a creepy uh, anglerfish happening here. We had a slightly cuter uh, jellyfish by its side. We had a very threatening uh, mafioso crab um, sitting atop there. Uh, had a little scruffy dog. Uh, a, a very proud, I think it was a Gaelic rooster. Yes. Um, followed by... Oh, with the football. Uh, I missed the football that you threw in there. With the football. Rugby. That's yeah. awesome. Um, uh, we had a, a, a little Kiwi friend, um, a cross-eyed Siamese cat. <laughs> we had a big orca jumping over the top there. A um, little meerkat popping up. Uh, 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 thank you. Um, thanks, folks. Duck. Um, being slightly threatened by yeah. this uh, Timber Wolf. <laughs> so maybe I need to turn that guy around. I think he's, he's maybe he's, he's, uh, okay. That's, let's, that's let's, the uh, hands kicking us off the stream in, in 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Following us carefully. Um, and, uh, yeah, there we go. That's it. Awesome. Absolutely amazing. And, um, this has been so much fun. We'll we'll definitely. I cannot wait to have a chat to you. We'll have you back on. We'll come up with something else as well. But I love this series, as I said. Um, I know that. Yeah, it's always been a big hit with chat. So thank you guys. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, please do stick around. Uh, we have in half an hour. Uh, we have an amazing stream with the incredible Sophie Eleanor. So please do join us. Um, yeah, gonna have a grab a coffee and then we'll come back and we're gonna hang out for another stream. So um, don't go anywhere. Um, Bill, thank you again so much. I can't wait to have you back on. No worries. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you all have a great day.